Hey guys, welcome back to Fully Spooled. This is episode three of my wiring series. I'm wiring my LS engine into my SC300 here, SC400 here. Uh, I had episodes one and two of my wiring already done. You can check them out up here. I think it's up here. Is it up there? Yeah, up here. Some people have been hitting me up on Instagram and here on YouTube saying how much this has helped them and asking questions and stuff, and I'm happy to answer questions for you all. Uh, I'm happy that this has helped you guys. I haven't really made this to be a, a DIY kind of guide uh, series of videos, but it's helping you all, which is awesome. You know, I really couldn't find a great uh, series of videos on YouTube up to this point of people taking a race car, gutting it, and then building it up from scratch with the wiring and stuff. So I'm, I'm really happy that I was able to help you all. So for this episode, we're going to get our relay panel finished up and wired to the switch panel behind me. And then we're going to get the battery installed with the whole uh, battery box, wires, cables, all that fun stuff. So stay tuned. All right, so these white wires here go to the switch side of my relays and they go along this loom out to these blue wires, which are going to go up to my switch panel. So I'm going to wire these guys up and then I need to add a bit more loom here to make it look nice and pretty. Back here we have all of my switches all hooked up. Now I'm gonna ground off these two terminals here to the chassis down here somewhere and uh, my switch panel will be wired. That's exciting. It's getting harder and harder to film this process because all the wiring is jammed up in the footwell of the passenger side of the car here, but I'm trying to get the best angle that I can. So this black wire here goes to my stop lights and then this goes to the back of the car right here. I'm gonna clip this and I'm going to wire this up to the blue wire here, which goes up to the top part of the relay and the white wire here will go to my brake switch on my brake pedal. I'm not obviously wiring this up to my switch panel because I don't need to have my brake lights activated to a switch on my dash. So uh, this one will be a bit different from the other ones. All right, well there we have all five of my relays all wired up. The first four go to the switches on my switch panel and the fifth one is my brake lights and that's triggered by the actual brake pedal switch because I need to actually go get another one of those. I broke mine before if you recall. So this blue switch goes to my actual brake pedals or brake lights at the back of the car and the white one here connects to this black wire which goes up and around to my brake switch on the brake pedals. Next I gotta connect the top line of each relay to each of the various things like my fans, that kind of stuff. So the pink wire there goes to my taillights and the blue and white wire goes to my headlights. They're now soldered together. And now I can put this terminal up into my relay. All right, I'm gonna do a quick change to the way that I'm doing my terminals here. Uh, these are the blade type terminals and I got these from Harbor Freight for super cheap. Uh, and they're fine for the most part when going into like a terminal block, but going into the back of a relay, like this one, as you can see, these guys are all kind of, they look loose, but that's because the actual, they actually have a, like a little hook on the back right here. I don't know if you can see that, but that little hook locks it in there so it doesn't come out. The ones that I've been using so far, like this one, don't have that hook on the back. So they can kind of slide in and they kind of stay in place, but they also fall out pretty easily. So I went on Amazon and got one of these little bags of about a hundred, a you know, hundred of these little uh, terminals that have hooks on the end just like the ones that I had in the relay and that's going to hook in there and lock in place So I'm going to cut this guy off and replace it with one of these hooked ones and that way I'm not worrying about having it You know rattling loose or anything on the track um, and as always you can find links to these guys and also I got a whole new Package of heat shrink here. All of this will be in the description below So here's the new terminal on my radiator wire and I have my heat shrink going on there and now when I pop this into the relay, it should click in place. Like that. And now you know it's locked in there and will not come out. So that's a really good upgrade on those terminal ends for sure. Okay, so I have my panel all wired up. This white wire goes from my very temporary situation on the positive terminal to the fuse block there. That's all wired up and all of these are run up to my switch panel. So in theory, Hopefully, if I ground my battery properly, I can use my switch panel here to control all of my stuff. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Do the ground. Let's see what happens here. Ignition, this one should be my fuel pump, so this one should be my 
Radiator fans. Can you hear that? My fans are working. <laughs> oh my god, it works. It totally works. This should be my headlights and taillights. Well, you're not going to hear that. Taillight on. That's awesome. Let's check the headlights. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, it works. Oh, man. Oh, it works. Oh, that's incredible. Oh, man, I'm so happy it works. <laughs> it's so cool. That's incredible. Headlights, taillights. Oh, this should be my windshield wipers. I'm not sure if those are hooked up correctly. Let me check before I hit that switch. I had to bolt down my windshield wipers, but now hopefully... Which one is it? This one? Oh, please work. Oh! <laughs> a little fast. It really works. That is the coolest thing that I've ever done to a car. Incredible. That's so amazing. Uh, I guess you can hear my voice, but I'm just really happy and proud that my very first time making a relay panel, it all just works perfectly. Oh, that's such a relief. Now I'm going to go through and get my battery hooked up and my kill switch and all that fun stuff. So here's everything that we need to do this battery installation. We have our power and ground wires, both zero gauge. This kit also comes with your terminal ends here. And then also it has this 200 amp fuse, which I'm not going to be using because I'm going to be using a 200 amp circuit breaker instead, which I got from Amazon. All of this actually came from Amazon and the links will be below, of course, as always. Uh, we have our DECA battery here. This is the ETX20, which is uh, just like the Braille battery pretty much. In fact, most people even say that DECA makes um, Braille batteries because it's made from East Penn Manufacturing, which makes both of those. So this is pretty much a, uh, this is a, I think it's like a 13 or 12 or 14 pound battery. It's very lightweight um, and, you know, it still gives good cranking and everything for the LS engines. And we have our battery case here, which is a smaller case than normal. And uh, our battery will fit right in there. And I just have to basically make a little mounting bracket inside of that that bolts to the bottom of the chassis. So. This is kind of all the parts that we have here. And like I said, all these parts will be linked below in the description and let's get this thing going. So as far as battery placement goes, I thought of a few different arrangements. One would be right here, one would be down here on the floor and one would be up by the PCM uh, near all the other, you know, wiring and stuff. And I decided to go right here because if I had to put it down here, the threaded rods that come up through the floor to keep the battery in place inside the box would actually be so low on the bottom of the car that if I were to go off track or something and hit, you know, the edge of the tarmac, uh, I, I might potentially rip the rod, uh, the uh, threaded rod out of the floor. And I just don't want it to have any problems with my battery because that's a lot of, you know, energy and power coming out of this thing. It'll be easily in reach if I need to get it from outside the car. Um, I can just put my ground strap here or my ground wire out of the box right to this guy right there And then I can just run my red power cable up and along to the front of the car This is my circuit breaker that I got. It's a 200 amp circuit breaker. I got it off of Amazon It was very cheap and it had very good ratings So I thought this would be a good idea to get this instead of like a fusible link or a really big fuse That way if it pops I can just reset it again no problem So I think what I might do is either put this on top of the box or even mount it inside the lid there. So this pre-existing drain hole is actually the perfect location for one of my two holes for my rod to go through here. Just like this. So I'm going to just drill this one out a little bit bigger and take measurements to drill the other one back there and then I can just, I mean this actually should go pretty quick. Oof. Really quick. All right, well there's one. So I cut this little piece of metal down and I have my rod here. So hopefully this is the right size. Pretty much like that. So from under the car here, I just got to figure out how far up my threaded rod's going to go, which is not going to be sticking out very much. Probably something like this. And then uh, we'll go back in the car again, pull it up, and then mark off how high it needs to be for inside the battery box. Before I can do the other side, I got to get my battery mat in there and trim it down to size so it fits. Let's do that right now.
I'm gonna have my box in place, battery in the box, and my rod where it needs to be, how high it's gonna be. I can figure out where to cut this rod to make my other one. So I'm gonna make it, I leave enough room for my nut right here. So that'll be my cut line. Done and tightened up. Actually distorted the box a little bit because it's putting pressure on it, but that's totally fine. That actually fits pretty well. That is locked solid in place. That's not going to go anywhere. I am really happy with how that turned out. Because I have my circuit breaker, I can just use the circuit breaker to turn off the battery instead of unbolting it or anything. So I think what I'm going to do is not use these terminals and I'll just bolt the actual, like, what will be the terminal here directly onto each side. All right, so to make this ground cable, we gotta take our ring terminal here, slide it on the end like that, and then crimp it. I got this crimping tool off of Amazon, and it was pretty cheap, it was like 20 bucks. Uh, the link will be below in the description, of course. And this is designed to help make a nice solid crimp, and then all you gotta do is just cut enough of the insulation off, so this fits exactly on just like that. So I'll cut the insulation off to just about here, um, and then I'll just put it through the crimper, and then we should be good to go. So to use this guy, you just put your ring terminal on the end of your battery cable, just like this, and try to get all of the fibers you can in there. And then you put it down like this, slide it inside this guy. And then this is a hammer blow type of crimper. So there are hydraulic ones where you kind of squeeze and it crimps it, which is really good, but they're more expensive. So basically we just hold it in just like this and then we just smack it with a hammer and that crimps it. In theory, I haven't used one of these before, so hopefully this works. Oh God. That did not work. I hit it harder. Oh yeah. That is definitely crimped on there for sure. That is nice and tight. So now we'll just put some heat shrink on there and right up to here as far as possible is best. And there we have one terminal end of my ground wire. Not too bad. All right, now I gotta do this a bunch more times. All right, there's one completed ground wire. This goes onto the battery here, just like this. And then we wrap this down to this guy down here just like that. And now we have our ground strap all ready to go. And it'll be just like this. All right, for the power cable, it's gonna be a bit different because I have to have my circuit breaker installed as close to the battery as possible. So my power cable will come out from this side up to there. And then from here, those two will connect and then it'll run all the way along like this up to the front of the car. And uh, my kill switch is gonna be on the left side of the steering wheel over there. But I need to run up along here because uh, formula drift rules actually state that you have to have a kill switch on this side of the windshield, kind of right around there somewhere. And um, like I said, this is not being built for formula drift, but I do wanna kind of work towards those specifications. So um, I'm gonna run the wire up here just for now. That way later on, if I do decide to do any kind of competition, I can add a new kill switch on there and I have to rewire the entire car. Well, I realize I can't have my circuit breaker on top of the box because my straps have to tie the box down there. So I thought I could put it on this side, but because of the way my cables are routing here, I'm actually gonna have a mount on the back side. So I drilled two little holes here so I can get my circuit breaker mounted up. All right, there's the next one made up. I use the smaller ring terminal here for the battery side and then the larger ring terminal here for the circuit breaker because this is a larger bolt. All right, there we have the red power cable coming out of the battery box from the battery up to the circuit breaker. Now I have to do one more cable from the circuit breaker there, down there to the front of the car. 
All right, there's the battery installed and the circuit breaker installed. That's really good progress. I have no idea what these things are for. They're like little hats. Look at their little hats. All right, guys, the very last step I have to do for the wiring here is to make sure that my brake lights work when I push the brake pedal, which means wiring up my brake switch. Now, if you recall a couple episodes ago, I actually broke this thing. Uh, so this is a replacement switch. It's only like seven bucks or so, which isn't too bad. So I gotta figure out how to get the wiring to work with my relay panel because the factory setup on the Lexus uses this crazy harness here, which has these coils and this goes through the ECU and it's just, it's a huge mess. I don't have the factory ECU anymore or any of the brake control stuff. Uh, so what I gotta do is figure out how to just make this switch work. So when I hit the brake pedal, this switch is power on and lights up my relay so my brake lights work. So to get some help on this, because I don't know very much about wiring, I talked with Jesse at Gearheads. And if you don't know about Jesse or Gearheads, definitely check out their channel. Uh, they do a lot of really cool stuff, a lot of Miata stuff, and then other just random projects. Definitely check them out because they are awesome guys and I love their content. Thankfully, with Jesse's help, I found out that this isn't that complicated. There are four pins here, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but these two bigger pins are the ones that I need to have running power to, to one of them, and then the other one will go to my relay switch. So I gotta just connect up the factory harness here, or what's left of it, and then just cut some wires out, and then solder in my new wires. So it's these two bigger wires here. So I'm going to snip these guys off and then connect a power wire to one and then a relay switch wire to the other one. And then in theory my brake lights should work. So I went through and removed the two smaller wires here and then I added blade terminals to the end of the other two wires. So if I plug this into my brake switch, now these two wires run up to my relay panel to the relay that goes to the stoplight. So if I plug these guys in, and it doesn't matter which side I put them in because they both go to the same a uh, little, you know, connector inside the switch here. I plug these two in. My brakes should technically work now, so I'm going to test them out. I was planning on doing my kill switch install this episode as well, but because we're already getting pretty long here for this video, I'm going to cut it now and do a fourth part of my wiring series uh, for my kill switch install and some other small things that I haven't gotten to yet in the first three parts. So that'll be coming super soon though because I already have my kill switch installed. I'll give you a quick little sneak peek of it. Oh, pretty. So yeah, that'll be coming up pretty soon, probably in the next couple days, maybe a week at most. And then I have some other small things like getting my gauge cluster figured out and that kind of stuff. So that'll be coming super soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being patient. I know I'm taking a while to get these episodes out, but my huge long job that I've been doing for the last six months is done. I finished it yesterday and I'm really excited about that because I can finally put the proper amount of time into the SC and getting it started up and getting it ready to go to the track. So I'm super excited about that. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Fully Spooled. Check out my Instagram, fully underscore spooled. Uh, like, subscribe, hit that little notification bell, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you